This is a scary weapon. Your edge is razor sharp. This weapon, sir, will... Woo! The War Galak. Originating in the Philippines during the 16th century, the War Galak featured a straight double-edged blade with no tip. Due to the Spanish occupation at the time, Filipinos were outlawed from having pointed swords, and the blade was often used for vegetation and chopping wood. However, by the Philippine Revolution in 1896, Filipinos adapted to the tipless weapon, and it became a weapon of war. It was so effective in battle, it inspired later variations of the weapon, such as the British military's army galak in the early 1950s. Bladesmiths, to see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your sword and deliver hacks and slashes on this big carcass. Brian, you're up first. You ready for this? Absolutely. I really like how the blade turned out, but I'm super nervous. Depending on where you hit that blade, you know, it can always snap apart. Bladesmiths, unfortunately, I'm still recovering from an injury. So, Anthony, one of my senior instructors of Markaida Kali, will be the butcher to your pork chop. All right, Brian, let's talk about your blade. First up, your edge is razor sharp. It lacerated easily through bones, through the spine. The one issue here is that you have a very blocky handle. Aside from that, it will kill. Good job. Thanks. Matt, ready to chop? I've been ready. Let's do this. I'm really nervous, but as long as this blade doesn't wrap around in a circle and hug this pig, I'm in good shape. Okay, Matt, its balance and weight is very forward for a chopper, but your edge is sharp enough to lacerate into the carcass. It did chop the spine, it did chop bone. This will kill. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is a strength test. To test the strength and durability of your edge, I'm gonna chop into these huge logs 10 times. Remember, this test is all about what happens to your weapons and not what happens to the logs. Brian, you're up first. Are you ready? I think so, yeah. All right. Your edge held up perfectly. There's no bending, no warping, just still razor sharp all the way down. Man, it was fun to swing. Well done. Thank you. Matt, you're up. You ready? Give it a try. All right. Well, Matt, there's so much forward weight that it actually bent that way. On the plus side, your edge held up beautifully. I mean, there's no problems with that edge at all. It's still very sharp, but this S-bend in it, it's significant. Bladesmiths, you both brought in some pretty extraordinary historic weapons, but in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Brian, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Matt, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Please surrender your galak. Even with losing at the end of the day, I don't feel like I really lost because I went way further than I ever expected. I don't know enough about it yet that I can make that perfect blade. So, you know, I'll keep learning. Brian. You are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Please present your weapon to the judges. It feels great to be Forged and Fire champ. Can't believe I won. It's awesome. 
I would say if somebody wants to start learning how to make a knife, start out watching Forge and Fire. Just start at episode one. Binge watch. The Moro Chris. The Chris came into existence around 1361 AD in the kingdom of Majapahit, East Java. Believed to be the primary weapons wielded by Asian warriors, its distinctive wavy blade creates a wider wound during combat, causing the victim to quickly bleed to death. The hilt is viewed as a work of art and is often carved in meticulous detail from precious wood, gold, or ivory. In popular culture, the Chris can be seen in the video game Mortal Kombat. The unique design of a Moral Chris is even made more distinct by its fluid, wave-like edges. It can thrust, but its primary purpose is slashing and chopping. To test your Chris's ability to perform according to its ancient design, I will use it to chop and slice against these moving targets. Mace, you're up first. Are you ready? Sure. Nice balance, nice recovery, allows you to just move with the blade. Good job. Thank you. Mary, you're next. You ready? Certainly am. Well, Mary, the balance of this blade allows me to chase an attack, and it will come with me. On the recovery to go to another attack, it will stay with me. It doesn't go away from me. It will slice. Good job. Thank you. The quality of the cut is obvious to the human eye. My blade was the sharper and more cleanly cutting blade. To test the lethality of your Chris, I will take your weapon. I'm going to strike into this animal carcass. Mace, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Well, it cut cleanly through the spine all the way through the meat in one big sweeping slash. It will kill. Good job. Thank you very much. Where are you up next? You ready? Yep. When cutting through, there was a slight drag in the feel of the cut but it did cut very cleanly through. It's a very, very sharp blade. It will kill. Doug's not giving me positive feedback about the way it cut, but I know that often it can just be the angle of the blade edge in relationship to the motion of the arm. Bamboo is a very durable material. Ounce for ounce, it is stronger than concrete, brick, or wood. To test the strength of your Chris, I will deliver four strikes into the bamboo to see how well your weapon stands up. Mace, you're up. I'm confident in my construction methods, but there's always that fear that your blade will come apart. I'm a bit nervous. Well, no damage to the blade, sir. It chopped nicely, but a couple of times over there, it did want to fall out of my hand just because it's so heavy on the blade. But nonetheless, looks like your edge did hold up. Excellent. Mary, you're up next. You ready? Yes, I am. Hey, Murray, looks like your blade edge held up with the chops. It almost clearly sliced all the way through. But there is now an issue that we're looking at with your blade. I think there might be a little bend here caused from chopping into the bamboo. But other than that, it still has a very sharp edge. 
the strength of the blade held up. Good job. Thank you. Gentlemen, you have both done immaculate work, but there can only be one champion. Mace, you are the Forged and Fire champion. Yes! Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Murray. Nice job, man. Thanks very much. Happy for you. Murray, unfortunately, your Chris did not make the cut. Murray, I find that weapon absolutely beautiful and comfortable, but the fact that there's a soft core in there somewhere and that it picked up a bend where your opponent's blade did not, that was the deciding factor, and, and that's why we had to let you go. Murray, please surrender your weapon. While there's always a disappointment when one puts their best effort forward and doesn't win. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you, Murray. I do feel an overwhelming sense of gratitude for having been able to participate. Mace made the better blade, and I'm proud of him. Mace, congratulations. Woo! Mace, fantastic. I mean, the steel's beautiful. I like how you did the file work on the blade. The blade held up beautifully. The edge is razor sharp. You should be exceptionally proud of that piece. You did a great job. I'm the Forge and Fire champion. I feel good. And I'm glad it came out on top. I'm the tiger. The Pandat. The Pandat is a two-handed sword carried into battle by the Dyaks, a group of tribes that have lived on the island of Borneo for thousands of years. Though most Dyak weapons doubled as useful tools, the Pandat was only used in war. Forged from iron, the Pandat features an angled blade and can be swung downwards with two hands. An iron cross piece was inserted through a hole at the end of the handle, protecting the user's hand. The blade was sometimes decorated with hair or rattan plant. Until the early 20th century, Dayak raiders plundered coastal settlements for resources, money, and even enemy heads, proving just how deadly this weapon could be. Bladesmiths, this is the sharpness test. To see how sharp your weapons are, I will attempt to cut through these web of ropes with three identical strikes. If they're sharp, I should meet no resistance. Joey, up first. You ready? Let's do it. It's awe-inspiring to see what these guys have come up with with this challenge. Seeing these ropes crisscross and everything, I'm a little apprehensive about it because I didn't get to test it on a rope, but it's something to cut. This blade's going to cut. Well, Joe, all the weight is at the tip of the blade. So when I come down, it wants to draw me forward. And the recovery is a little bit harder on the way back. You have a sharp edge over here that I almost met no resistance. Overall, sir, your blade will cut. Pete, you're up next. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Okay, Pete, it is a sharp blade. The balance is light. You have a lighter blade here. It's not as heavy to pull forward. It's a good job. The only issue I have is that I kind of ran out of handle here. I would have liked to see a little pummel here or probably even a, a longer handle so it's easier to control and not feel like I'm at the end of my rope, so to say. Overall, this weapon, sir, will cut. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, next up, it's a kill test. Now, the Pandat was a weapon used by headhunting tribes in Borneo. To see how lethal your weapon is, I will take your Pandat and I will deliver one blow to this carcass. Let's see how much damage your weapon can do. Joe, you're up first. You ready? Bring it. Let's do it. Okay, Joe, the balance feels so forward heavy that when you slice through this carcass, it pulled me into it and cut cleanly all the way through. This weapon, sir, will kill. Good job. Thank you. Pete, you're up next. You ready? Yes, I am. Okay, Pete, 
The difference with your blade is that it's light. And because it's light, I can use velocity to help cut through this carcass. This weapon, sir, will kill. Good job. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this is the strength test. To test the strength and durability of your blades, we're going to hook them into our machine here, which is going to chop into this bundle of sugar cane. Now, if your blades are tempered properly, they should cut into the cane without a problem. If not, we might get them to bend, warp, well, we'll see what happens. And Joe, you're already rigged up on the machine. You ready to go? Let's go. All right, let's do this. All right, Joe. Three, two, one. All right, so Joe, now I want to pull this out of the machine. There's a bit of a bend right here in the Ricasso, kind of a gap right along the edge of the blade in the guard. It had that warp when it got here. It had that warp when it got here? It's actually offset. It's got a little bit of a twist, maybe a five degree twist. I couldn't get it out whenever I built it. Well, it may have gotten bigger during that test. Overall, the edge held up fine, no damage whatsoever. It's got a good shape. Good job. Thank you, sir. All right, Pete, you're all locked in. You ready for this? I am. All right. All right, Pete. Three, two, one. All right, Pete, you can actually see how much this blade flexed when it went into the, into the cane and came back to true, which is always what I want to see. Definitely sharp, well put together. Feels good. All right, well done, Pete. Thank you. Pete, Joe, this is one of the tightest competitions that we've had. It was a difficult decision, but that final decision has been made. The Forged and Fire champion is Pete, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Joe, your Pendot did not make the cut. Doug will explain. Joe, the presentation of both blades performed equally well. So much so that we had to go to the finer details of its performance. The angle of your Pendot being so top heavy was harder to control in all the tests that we were doing. And for that, we have to let you go. Joe, please surrender your weapon. This experience has taught me, like many things in life, to try. Dare to fail. If you fail, so what? Feeling kind of disappointed right now, but uh, at least I tried. Pete, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving that check for 10 grand. Good job. Thank you. How are you feeling right now, Pete? I feel pretty good. I'm feeling like I could just roll on the floor and bust out laughing. It feels real good. It feels real good to win. I'm going home, the Forge and Fire champion, and I know all 24 of my grandkids are going to be excited for Grandpa. The Compilon. According to legend, the Compilon was the sword that killed explorer Ferdinand Magellan at the Battle of Mactan in what is now the Philippines. The heavy spur-tipped sword was used by island warriors in battle and could chop off two heads in one swing. The single-edged blade could also cut through its scabbard with no resistance, allowing it to be quickly wielded without being unsheathed. The Compilon's distinctively carved wooden hilt was sometimes embellished with strands of hair, offering a unique and appealing appearance for this otherwise deadly weapon. All right, gentlemen, to test the sharpness of your blades, I'll be chopping through our cat's cradle of rope here. Now, Todd, you're up first. You ready? I am. I'm proud of how my Compilon turned out. You try to do everything right. You don't know if it's going to work out that way. Lord, help me. All right, Todd, this blade has all the weight right here. You know, it's a weapon that's designed to be used one or two-handed, but controlling all that forward weight definitely puts this as a two-hand only sword. It's a good looking piece, and it definitely is a cutter. Michael, you're up, you ready? Let's do it. 
I am a little worried. If Dave thinks that Todd's sword's heavy, he's gonna really dislike mine. Still a very heavy weapon. I would have zero confidence swinging this one-handed that it wouldn't get away from me. But the weight distribution on your blade is further back, which gave me quite a bit more control to chop those ropes. It's definitely a cutter, so good job. Nicely done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. I'm gonna take your campilan and deliver lethal blows on this big carcass. Todd, you're up first, you ready? I sure am. Let's do this. My concern on the pig test is my blade is thicker in the middle. I'm hoping mine will go all the way through. It won't slow it down by the thickness. All right, Todd, the swing over here, almost cut all the way. And of course, with an easy swing on the way back, it cut the pig in half. The Campilan will kill. Thank you. All right, Michael, your turn, you ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. I'm excited. I want to see my sword cut through a pig. All right, Mike. So even though it is a heavier blade, its counterbalance allows it to wield going forward and backward easily. So it was an easy recovery for the final chop. Overall, your campilan will kill. Thank you. Good job. All right, gentlemen. To test the strength and durability of your blade, I'll be chopping into this green bamboo. The strength test is always the toughest on a blade. I didn't want to get it too hard. I'm nervous because this test proves you did it right. If you didn't, there's a flaw in it. It's going to reveal itself here. I don't feel any damage whatsoever on the edge. It did a job on that bamboo and it's clean. Well done. Thank you. Michael, you ready? Let's do it. Okay. I am still recovering from the trauma of watching Dave use Todd's sword on that bamboo. This test, I believe, is the one that's gonna make or break my blade. Well, I thought I saw something, but it was just bamboo stuck to your blade. It's fine. There's no damage there. Your blade hasn't changed shape at all. Good job. Well done. Going in like this, and we're so close. Now it's up to the judges. It's their pick. And so I'm a little nervous. All right, Bladesmiths, from the moment you guys lit those coal forges until this moment, you've put in a lot of hard work. It's been a lot of stress. But in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fired champion, and that champion is... Michael, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fired champion. Todd, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Todd, this is what we judges expect in the third round two beautiful blades equally matched, but it comes down to the finer details. Your blade isn't as well balanced as that of your opponents, and your design and detail were not as strong. So for those reasons, we have to let you go. I understand. Be proud of your work, Todd, because it was a close call. 
but please surrender your weapon. I never thought about making it this far. Well, this is the first sword I've ever made. I'm proud of what I did, and it held up good. I didn't think that I would be capable of doing this. And you never know what kind of strength you can find. Michael, congratulations. You are the Forge of Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. <laughs> All right, what's going on inside of there? It is surreal. Uh, wasn't expected starting this competition, but huge affirmation of my skills. Please present your weapon to the judges. It's surreal. It hasn't really set in yet. All the years that I've put into this hobby, this craft, and now to be here and be the Fortune Fire champion, it's pretty amazing. The Killer Wing. One of Malaysia's deadliest traditional weapons, the Kelawing, is a single-edged sword used in tribal warfare in the 18th century. This light short sword with its curved belly and clipped tip was a brutal slasher and stabber. During its brief rule of Malaysia, the Dutch colonial government deemed the sword so lethal they banned it from use before developing their own version to quell uprisings. With ornate features like an elaborately carved hilt or an intricate hook on the spine, the Kelawing became an elegant accessory worn at formal events. Today, its Dutch counterpart is still worn at ceremonies by the Royal Netherlands Army. Bladesmiths, to see what kind of lethal damage your Kelewang will do, I will take your Kelewang and deliver slashes and thrusts on these ballistics dummies. Hunter, you're up first. You ready? Where's I'm gonna get? My blade's very sharp. Um, I cut through probably half a case of water bottles. Took no edge deformation, and it's sharp, so I just gotta hope it's good enough for the dummies. While my arm is healed enough to wield a knife on the ratchet strap slash, my arm is still healing. So, Bladesmiths, please welcome R.G. Markaida. He will have the pleasure of wielding your weapon. Hunter, let's talk about your Kelewang right here. Your edge over here is sharp. It glides through and lacerates your weapon. When slashing, broke some ribs. Your Kelewang, sir, will kill. Thank you. All right, Tim, you ready? As I'll ever be. Hunter got really good feedback. That first slice went in deep, so he's got one mother of an edge on that thing. I hope mine does that well. <laughs> All right, Tim, the first thing I noticed about it is your handle. The minute you grab onto it, it's ovoid enough to let us know and index where the edge is. You have a tip that's also very sharp and pointed that when it penetrated, not only it penetrated, it broke some ribs also. Your Kelly Wang will kill. Thank you. Next up, the strength test. Bladesmith, we've taken these parts from a buffalo plow, and to test the strength and durability of your Kelly Wangs, I'm gonna chop into them. Remember, this test is all about what they do to your Kelowang and not what your Kelowangs do to them. Hunter, you're up first. You ready? Where's I'm gonna get? I'm really nervous. My sword's lean. It's pretty narrow. This seems like it's gonna be a lot more brutal on the blades than uh, what I was expecting. Hunter, your blade broke. The main issue was that at the intersection of the blade and this decorative curl, there was a saw cut that came in. It's a sharp notch, and we call those stress risers. They're a place where something is gonna break. The way you protect against that problem is you round the bottom of that notch, and it tends to dissipate the energy better. Hunter, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure and can no longer continue with testing. However, you're not out of this competition yet. Tim, your blade also must survive at least five whacks in order for you to move forward. After seeing Hunter's blade snap, 
I'm worried mine might snap off as well. Well, Tim, it held up. Can't see any evidence of, of the activity on the edge of this blade. It's still razor sharp. I really enjoyed swinging it. Nice job. Thank you so much. Hunter, your blade suffered a catastrophic failure. For that reason, I have to dismiss you from the forge. I'm feeling pretty disappointed. I don't know, I just thought it was gonna be more solid than that. If I could start over again, I'd make the blade a little wider, a little thicker, and make sure I didn't have a stress point in it. I still wanna go full time. I've definitely learned a lot. Every blade I make from now on is gonna be better. Well, Tim, all your hard work paid off. You turned in a Kella wing that's deadly, and let's face it, looks like a $10,000 weapon. Worthy of the title, Forged and Fire Champion. Congratulations. I wanted to prove to myself more than anything that I am at this level. It feels really great to be Forged and Fire Champion. I can let a lot of those doubts slip to the side, move past them. Bladesmithing, it's not just what I do, it's who I am. The Javanese Chris. A symbol of status in the Javanese warrior, the Chris has been one of the most prized possessions of Indonesian culture since the 14th century. The weapon includes an ornate pistol grip hilt and a long, narrow, double-edged blade that can either be straight or wavy. Much like the Indian Qatar, the Chris was used for thrusting or jabbing, and it was not uncommon for warriors to wield one in each hand to take down an opponent. Intensely personal possessions, Chris's are often at the center of job and rituals, particularly during marriages, and are passed down as heirlooms. All right, bladesmiths, this is the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your quizzes and deliver slashes and thrusts on this big carcass. John, you're up first. You ready for this? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. I'm just so nervous at this point that my legs are actually shaking. And I don't know if I'm just so nervous to see it in the hands of somebody else or nervous that it's going to break. <sighs> I think having these waves here pretty much answers what kind of damage that will do. Every thrust pierces in. I could feel it riding the skin and cutting. If you look at the wound channel on the way out, it's that wide. This definitely has a sharp edge. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Steve, it's your turn. You ready? Yep. Let's do this. That's impressive. All right, Steve, let's talk about your Chris here. The balance of this blade is really good. It's done in such a way to where I can really get speed in cutting. And because your angles of the edge over here is almost like an acute edge, it allows to cut deeply into this big carcass. It's light, it's fast, and it's sharp, and it will kill. Thank you very much. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. To test the strength and durability as well as the overall construction of your Javanese Chris, I'm gonna be stabbing them in and out of these oil drums. Remember, this test is all about what these drums do to your swords and not what your swords do to these drums. John, you're up first, you ready? Let's do it. All right. Whew. 
Ooh. First things first, John, everything held up really well. The one thing that gives me a pause is the tip took some dulling. All in all, really well done. Thank you. Steve, you're up next. You ready? Yep. All right. <laughs> Well, Steve, I love the shape and the design of your Chris. It's very classic. I don't see any damage. Even though it's stabbed quite deeply into the drum, is still razor sharp. Well done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, you survived our kill test and a brutal strength test. Now it's time to find out if your blades still have an edge. It's time for the sharpness test. And I'll be attacking these bags with stabs and slashes. And unlike the strength test, this is all about what your blades do to those targets. John, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. OK. With my dull the edge, I feel like Steve's blade performed slightly better in the tests. I'm hoping that something's going to happen to bump me up so I can be ahead in the competition. All right, John, that's really a beautiful looking blade. As far as the cuts went, it cut very cleanly. There's no jagged cutting on those bags, which is really nice. Your handle, I like the shape here. It's a little bit short for me. I'm kind of bumping right against here, but nicely done. Thank you. Steve, you're up. You ready? Yeah. Right now, I think it's neck and neck. I am pretty nervous. My legs are locked up. If this doesn't cut as good as John's, I won't win. <laughs> All right, Steve. Design-wise, your blade, I really like it. Your handle, I like that. I know that's not going anywhere. It's easy to index. As far as the cuts go, I think they speak for themselves. They're all clean, straight through. Really good job, Steve. Thank you very much. You bet. Appreciate it. John, Steve, the judges have made their final decision. There are no losers here today, gentlemen. Both of you have made excellent weapons. The next Forest and Fire champion is... Steve, congratulations. You're the new Forest and Fire champion. John, you brought us a beautiful and exceptional weapon. No one can take that away from you. But it was just outperformed during our test. For that reason, we're sending you home. Thank you. Unfortunately, at this time, I have to ask you to please surrender your blade. You know, nobody likes to lose, but just being here was a win for me. Thank you, guys. Really? I grew a ton, both as a knife maker, but as a person as well. First thing I'm going to do when I get home is hug my little girl and wife. I think they're going to be proud of me for sure. Steve, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Great. Thank you. I won. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm glad it happened. You know, the cutting just tells the story. John did really a good job. I think my blade just cut a little better than his. My name's Steve Coster, and I am the winner of Forged and Fire. The Panavis. Known as a chopping tool for both agriculture and combat, the Panavis earned its place as a weapon of war in the southern Philippines during the 19th century. Its sharp, forward curved blade acted like an oversized meat cleaver and delivered deep, clean cuts, which made it ideal for executions. On the battlefield, warriors carrying a Panavis would follow behind the front lines and behead anyone unlucky enough to have survived the first wave of attacks. This is a kill test to see what kind of lethal damage your Panavas will do. I will take your weapon and deliver slashes across this pig carcass. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Absolutely. Let's do this. Yes. 
Okay, Josh, this is a scary weapon. It's got a sweet spot in there that allows for a nice chop, and of course, second so chop cut through the spine, the ribs, everything. Your panabas will kill. Good job. Good job. All right, Ray, it's your turn. You ready? You betcha. Let's do this. I'm thinking I just got to do as good as Josh did. But I loved it when Doug said it will kill. That's with two E's. I need me a cup of coffee, Ray. You better. <laughs> In the feel of this, I can feel the blade already wanting to chomp. The arc is right where the sweet spot is. That allows the blade to cut cleanly all the way through. And overall, your panabas will kill. My favorite. Next up is the strength test. Dave? Gentlemen, in 1521, the explorer Magellan landed on the island of Cebu, sparking several decades of conflict between the Philippines and Spain. So to test your panabas, I'm going to strike a Spanish Morian twice with the edge of your weapon. Now, this is not about what your weapon does to the helmet, but what the helmet does to your weapon. Josh, you're up. You ready? Sure. OK. I don't see any wrinkling, any deformation, any rolling on your edge, which is pretty amazing. I'll put some dents in that helmet. <laughs> Ray, you ready for this? Can't hardly wait. Yeah, hey, let's make it happen. Ray, I can see a little shiny spot here. It's just that wire edge feels like it's kind of tipped just a hair. It's definitely still sharp. Very nice. It felt good in the hand. Thank you. Next up is the sharpness test. For that, I'll give you back to Doug. Bladesmiths, we know your blades can kill. We know your blades are strong, but are they still sharp? To test the edge retention of your blade, I will take your panabas and I will cut the rope. That will release the sandbag, which simulates an oncoming attack. I will then run the blade across this and cut it. Josh, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, he died. Me like it a feel. <laughs> feels good in the hand, enough to move and maneuver in close quarter combat. And overall, your weapon will cut. That's all I ever wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, it's your turn. You ready? You betcha. Let's do this. Let's do it. This is gonna be tough, Ray. I know it. I like your blade too. Your panabas definitely is a cutter and it's easy to wield. Your panabas will cut. Thank you, sir. Good job. Heading into judging, I feel really neck and neck with Ray. But I can see myself like the end of a John Hughes film with that pan of his blade above my head. It's gotta happen. Josh, Ray, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion in this arena, and that champion is Josh. Ray, unfortunately, your Panabas did not make the cut. Jason Knight will explain. When it comes down to this type of competition, sometimes just the little details are the game changer, Ray. Josh had a little bit more subtleties in his design. His handle was octagonally faceted, and he had file work in the spine. And those subtle details are the reason why Josh's blade won. Ray, please surrender your weapon. 
buddy. You got Give it. Give me a hug. Well, I feel great. I came here not to prove anything. I just enjoy the competition. My knife performed and his knife performed, so he got the money and I got the fun. Josh, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. You're super excited right now, aren't you? This is like, it just feels so good. All of you fans, wherever the hell you came from, I love you guys. Josephine, with their designs that helped me get through round two with the handle, thank you. You made daddy win. I am the Forged and Fire champion! That's what the happened. Woo! Sorry, Andy.